University of North Carolina, where police have arrested more than 30 protesters. Armed officers moved in to dismantle an encampment and arrested demonstrators who refused to leave. On Tuesday, protesters replaced an American flag flying on campus with a Palestinian one. There have been confrontations at the camp in recent days with police pepper spraying students. Phil Lavelle's at the University of North Carolina. He's joining us now live. Uh, talk us through what's been happening there, Phil. Yeah, I mean, Rob, it's, it's been a very chaotic 24 hours. It seems very calm now, but we've been in this situation before and it changes just like that. This morning, it's a little after nine o'clock in the morning. The flag is there and it is surrounded by this metal fence. And that is there for that very specific reason, because this was the focal point yesterday. But let me just run you through what happened yesterday, because there was so much going on. 6 a.m., the police moved into this area. This is where there were a number of protesters who'd spent several days camping out here. The university had sort of been tolerating them, but had been trying to get them to leave. Six o'clock, the police turned up and said, you've got to go, you've got half an hour. They then detained everybody here. That was 36 people. 30 were cited for trespassing, then released. Six were arrested on misdemeanors and they were taken to the courthouse to be booked. But that was by no means the end of the matter. Come 12 o'clock, they were back and there were quite ugly scenes. There were protesters supporting Palestinians. There were counter protesters here and the police were uh, deployed. We understand that at one point there were officers from six different police departments, plus the sheriff. There was pepper spray, there was uh, tear gas, there were batons being used. And at one point, those pro-Palestinian protesters took that flag down. They replaced it with the Palestinian flag. That led to the chancellor then turning up with police, taking down the Palestinian flag, reinstating the American flag. The American flag then came down for safekeeping and now it is back up. So completely chaotic scenes. And then later on, 8 p.m., there was another 800 strong protest at the University of North Carolina in Raleigh, about 15 or 20 minutes away from here, as well as a 50 or so strong protest at the post office about half a mile from here, because that is deemed to be federal property rather than university property. So you've got different police involved in that. I'm going to bring in Abigail, who's one of the protest organizers, because you were here yesterday. Just explain to us, give us your perspective of what happened. Sure. Um, I'm actually from Duke. I'm a, I'm a Duke student who helped um, organize bringing Duke students here as it was a triangle wide encampment with a number of uh, schools represented here. And um, yesterday morning I was helping to set up a separate action that was smaller that was happening on Duke property when we got word of what was happening here. And um, it was just devastation. And I came here um, as soon as I could, which was uh, just in time for the afternoon protests to um, really be fully underway and to see the police um, just really well and truly brutalizing people. Um, while only 36 uh, people were detained in the morning, by the afternoon, um, many, many other protesters had turned out in support and um, we were all uh, being treated really horrifically by the police. I mean, I saw a woman be thrown out of her wheelchair. Um, I saw a protester. Um, I, I ended up, I have some medical training and I, I ended up working with the medics and we had one student come in who had been clobbered in the back of the head, who was just covered in dried blood and countless students tear gassed and maced. Um, and it, it was quite a, quite, as you say, a chaotic and, and truly brutal scene. Do you think, I mean, obviously the police are trying to close these down, but are they just by doing that, are they mobilizing the protesters even more, would you say? Yes, I absolutely think so. I, I do want to make it very clear and I want to speak directly to the, the people of Palestine, the people of Gaza, if I may, and say that just because this encampment was torn down yesterday doesn't mean this is over. You know, we are just getting started and we are not going to give up. We're not going to stop fighting for you or fighting for an end to this genocide until it's over and until you can live in peace and, and you can feel safe and feel free um, and, and be free. Uh, I think that by mobilizing the police against us in such a way, it's just highlighting how horrific the injustice is and it's just making us all that more um, 
all that more sure that this needs to continue to happen. Okay, Abby, thanks very much for that. I mean, the issue that the police have here, really, is that there are a number of universities in this area, and these protesters are going all over the place, which perhaps gives them the advantage because the police can only be in one place at one time, and they have to deploy in large numbers to shut these protests down. It's very difficult for them to be in more than one place, which, as I say, gives the protesters a slight advantage, you might say. Phil Lavelle at University of North Carolina. Phil, thanks a lot. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Algeria.